Disclaimer. Please check your playback settings. Ensure you are listening to this podcast at normal speed. Unless you want us to sound drunk. Then play at half speed. Thank you. Merry holiday, everyone. Did anyone get anything good? I got this. Whatever it is. The hell is it? Oh! Oh, um, that's, uh... I think that's one of those special edition orange Death Stars. Wait, I, but I don't see the dish, though. This must be one of those, um, manufacturer error ones. Huh. It's a basket ball. What do you do with it? Yeah, um, and where's the basket part? Does that supposed to be separate? Oh, for fuck's sake. You guys ever play sports as kids? No. Outside now. Holy shit, when did we get a basketball court? Is that what that thing is? Guys, we covered this in the last selection section episode. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we'll start with the basics. Tom, try to make a basket. Okay, wh- where's the twine? I don't have anything to make a basket. Tom, you just get the ball into the basket. Oh, that! Oh, with the net. Oh, I sure, that's easy enough. <laughs> stop, stop, wait. What are you doing? You're supposed to dribble the ball when you move. Give me that. Here, Josh, you try dribbling. Uh, okay, um... Oh, look at this. It bounces. Oh, look how high it goes. Ooh, oh, my turn next! No, pay attention. Josh, pass me the ball. Uh. God damn it, right in the face. <sighs> Do not overhand. Pass it like this. Oh, 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 oh. Now you pass it to Tom. Not so hard! <gasps> I got it! Now, Tom, pass it back to Josh. Eh. Wait, it bounced. Does that count? Yeah, th- th- that's okay. Are you sure? Yes. Can I roll it? No. Kickball! <laughs> ah! God damn it! Right in the nose this time. Do not use your feet. How the hell am I supposed to run? You... you run. But you said no feet. Oh, for fuck's sake. Look, when you run, you run with your feet. Like you always do, and then you you dribble the ball like I showed you. Oh, I remember one. You get, like, double points if it bounces off the back of the board. Bounces off the back... No, you don't! No, really! Like this! Not over him! You almost hit me again. Sorry. Sorry. You know what? Forget it. Ah! God damn it! Ooh. You okay there, buddy? <sighs> yeah, let's watch a movie, guys. Rise and shine, campers. Put on your booties, because it's cold outside. It's cold out there every day. That's right, woodchuck chuckers. It's Groundhog's Groundhog Day. Day. It's the Groundhog Day Parade to Punxsutawney. We've got everything here in this here parade. Hey, it's Hoosiers with Gene Hackman. Oh, and uh, Dennis Hopper. In speed. Oh, wow. Now we have Keanu Reeves in... Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey. Oh, my God. And William Sadler. Die Hard 2. Oh, my God. Bruce Willis. Armageddon. Don't look now. Don't look now. It's Ken Hudson Campbell. To... Groundhog's Day! Parade down the streets of Punxsutawney with Dan, Tom, and Josh every Tuesday at the fire pit as they make their way down to the most timeless holiday of the season, Groundhog's Day! The winter may be long, but hey, they got you, babe. Do, 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 do. Rise and shine, bots and listeners, because it's time for another exciting episode of The Fire Pit. I'm Dan, British name Nigel, and after flying high on our hero's journey, we're on the parade to Puxatani to Groundhog Day, the 1993 dramedy classic starring Bill Murray. But as we all know on this podcast, it's all about the journey, and what a journey we have in store for you in the next six weeks. But uh, a bit of clarity, just in case Selection Section 6 was just too epic for you all. 
Um, Josh realized a couple of months back that our final journey for season one will end on February 2nd. At least the episode will go live on February 2nd. So naturally, we thought the best film to get to would be Plan 9 from Outer Space. Just kidding. We're heading towards Groundhog Day, obviously. I just said it a minute ago. We're going to have some fun starting with tonight's movie. I I really wish you guys could hear us select these, but we're going to have a lot of fun tonight. But obviously, as per the rules, we've taken an actor, actress from the last film we watched and moved them to this one. And now to tell us about what we're watching and who we're watching, I send things over to Josh. Well, thank you, Dan. Josh here, British name Reginald. And last week, we got to see Gene Hackman portray the greatest criminal mind of our time as Lex Luthor in 1978's Superman. Tonight, he'll portray the greatest basketball mind in Hickory Times High, Hickory High's time, Hickory is high time as Norman Dale. English is hard. (laughs) It is. Why do these words have to be in this particular order? But in uh, 1986 Hoosiers, starring Gene Hackman, Dennis Hopper, and Barbara Hershey. Now, as you probably heard in last week's selection section episode, we all took pity on Dan's list and we decided to pick his because me and Tom just gave out these just lists that was just too amazing for this world. So, but we went with Dan's list. They were pure as the driven snow. They were. They were. But we felt that Dan's list had the most enticing movies that just couldn't shine in the light of me and Tom's lists. Seriously, our lists were that good. But uh, the movie tonight is Hoosiers. This movie is loosely based on a true story. And spoiler alert, the movie never explains what exactly a Hoosier is. It will forever remain one of the great mysteries of our time. But what's not a mystery is the facts of the film. And on with the rundown, I'm going to turn things over to Thompson. Tom? Thank you, Josh. Tom here, British name Thompson, as Josh noted. And there was no last second shot needed for this film for it to become an instant classic and obviously a great choice for this selection and a good alternate to Josh's and I's list. As we noted in the last selection section, number six, I mean, Nigel, not to disparage your list at all, but we wanted something to look forward to. We just well, want, didn't want to blow our load. We didn't want to peak too early. You can't risk peaking too early. But I think this list and this film as a starter going to Groundhog's Day, it's a good leveler. Trust me. It'll give us that sustain, that endurance that'll lead us well into the next weeks, months, and years. But Hoosiers, directed by David Anspa in his first feature-length film, so good on him, was released on the 14th of November, 1986. It has a running time of 115 minutes, a budget of $6 million, and a box office of $28.6 million. So very low-key sort of film. It also has stood the test of time being such an underground sort of film. Uh, Rotten Tomato has it at an 89% with an audience score of 88%, a rare occasion where both the audience and the critics agree pretty much down the line. IMDb also a 7.5 out of 10, which given our past history, it's about a middle ground. They didn't like it, didn't hate it. Um, Some of our past experience, uh, we haven't had the best luck with any films around 6 to 7. But who's to say with this one? This film... As Josh and Dan noted, uh, it's actually based on a true story with only some modest Hollywood changes. Looking this up, team, this was pretty close to the details. They even had the final shot. They shot that from the exact same spot as Bobby Plump when he made that in the 1954 finals. The only real difference was going into the finals. By midseason, the school was not considered an underdog. Everyone saw like, oh shoot, these guys need to be taken seriously. Uh, But what was not taken seriously by this film was, um, well, the film itself. Uh, No one had any expectations for it the producers uh, they only gave it six million which meant they had to get most of the basketball team and the extras from the local community they had to bring in the town to make this movie which having seen winter bones that's not always a bad thing it usually adds to the charms but gene hackman what an asshole what a damned asshole in this film he had no faith going into this film He even told Dennis Hopper 
do I hope you've got some other things lined up because after this, your career is dead, buddy. He, seriously. Wow. I've seen this movie a hundred times and I've, ne- I've never known that about Gene Hackman that he thought that he really thought this movie was going to kill his career. Oh, he was wretched. He kept trying to get everyone fired. He, he tried to get the director fired numerous occasions. Wow. He constantly, he threw fits, he threw furniture. He, until Dennis Hopper showed up, he was absolutely impossible to deal with. He wouldn't come back to re-record voices until he saw the dailies. It's like, you're the star of this film. What is wrong with you? So, yeah, this film, one of those ones where it has as much drama going into it. The story of making the film is about as interesting as the film itself. And I really can't judge the initial box office on this one. It didn't really prove uh, Hackman wrong. It was released um, 1987. I'm looking this. Uh, The movie was released in, as you said, November of 1986, but it got its wide release in like February of 1987. Now it premiered in 30 theaters for the first two weeks. And then it doubled a little more than doubled to 74 theaters, Mm -hmm. but it wasn't until it's fifth week of release that it got its wide opening. Ah, but uh, honestly the box office looks a little weird. Cause I mean, 87 or 86, 87, there's like no box office from December to January just hits February, Mm -hmm. but it looks like it's got its wide release in February on, uh, it's yeah 16th weekend so that's when it went live like when it premiered it premiered at rank 17 on the first week of release crocodile dundee was number one on its eighth week of release ouch like seriously the top five was number one was crocodile dundee number two was the color of money number three was soul man number four was peggy sue got married and number five was jumping jack flash Mm -hmm. i recognize three of those movies <laughs> and it wasn't much better in its wide release just looking up it lost to nightmare on elm street 3 the dream warriors which premiered number one that weekend uh, platoon which uh had premiered number one the week before was number two outrageous fortune at number three mannequin at number four and who should round it out number five and the week after that it was not much better it wound up dropping pretty far down to number eight and continued so this was one of those films that no one respected at the time it was yeah, it released sound like or it was probably one of those ones they put they hope for oscar noms so they were, tried to get it released in 1986 but interestingly enough this is podcast trivia here the when it was released it shared the box office with two previous movies we've watched top gun and stand by me no kidding. Yeah, Top Gun was number 10, and Stand By Me was number 8 that week that it was released. I'll be a monkey. Well, that's kind of cool, actually. And speaking of, you know, Oscars and stuff, this actually did get some awards. It had quite a bit of um, accolades to it. Jerry Goldsmith was nominated for Best Original Score. I think uh, one or a couple other ones here, too. So it eventually did get a little recognition. And now today it's considered one of, if not the premier sports movies ever made. I mean, we were talking, Dan, you, me and Josh. It's like, oh, Hoosiers, that is the sports film. Everyone knows Hoosiers now. How can you not know Hoosiers? How can you not love Hoosiers? Yeah. So, again, it's one of those things, like, I guess, you know, sometimes a film is just never appreciated in its time. But we know what they thought of the film, and we definitely know what Gene Hackman thought of the film. And we kind of know how the consensus is now, but I'm wondering what our expectations are going into this film. So, Nigel, what about you, my sir? What are you uh, expecting from this film we're getting out. Have you seen this film? I guess is also my first question. Oh yeah. Too. I've seen this film a dozen times. If I've seen it once, it's one of my favorite movies of all time, especially in sports movies. It might be my, maybe it's my number three. It might be my number three favorite sports movie of all time. I don't know. I love this film and I had no idea of until the minute you said it, that Gene Hackman hated it. At least hated working on it. Um, he seems to speak rather fondly of it now, but I guess that's because it ended up being a, hit and his career obviously didn't die after 1986 because i mean he went on to make a lot of other movies like i love how this movie was supposed to be his career killer but superman 4 wasn't <laughs> i'm just saying gene gene I, I know you're not listening to this podcast but on the 0.1 percent chance that you are you're wrong okay this this film was awesome this film was great in superman 4 i know it was a favor but um no 
you cut Superman's hair with garden shears in that movie. Absolutely not. Anyways, so uh, my expectations for this film, though, tonight, I'm actually looking forward to watching it with you guys because this is a classic. And I love when the three of us get to watch a classic together, even if we don't all like it, Josh, John Wayne. And <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Like I said, I love when we watch a classic together. Like I really enjoyed when we watched Shawshank Redemption together. I really enjoyed when we watched um, Independence Day together, although I don't know if that's a classic of cinema. But like Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, like the classics. I really do enjoy watching the classics with you guys, um, even if we don't all like it or don't all, all agree. Like, you know, um, uh, like True Grit, that, that's considered a classic. And I enjoyed it. You were indifferent to it, towards it. Josh hated it. But it's fun. It's fun to watch those classics together because sometimes, you know, those difference of opinions are are interesting. So I think that's what I'm looking forward to the most. That my expectation is I want to watch a classic with my friends and really absorb the movie and watch it in a, for the critical sense. Instead of that, that sports movie kind of sense, like, Ooh, I'm going to watch the underdog win the championship. So pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. That very concise expectations. I would have to say, Josh, what about you? Good, sir. I just, I, I just want to start off by saying, I love how Dan's still bitter that I didn't like true grit. Oh, for fuck's sake. But uh, on the, uh, but on the, uh, you know, honestly, I also think you're giving Gene Hackman a very good chance of listening to our show, a tenth of a percent that he's actually listening to our show. I think that's pretty damn good chance, given that, you know, he probably has never heard of us. But Gene, in the, uh, my rough estimate, the point zero 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 one percent chance that you are listening to our podcast, what's up? <laughs> but my expectations for this film are that uh, I haven't seen this movie since the 90s. I remember watching it with my dad. Just the two of us were sitting down watching it. And I remember really enjoying... No, my mom was there too. Hi, mom. I remember you were there too. I remember enjoying the film. Um, I don't remember much about it. I remember the scene where he measured the goal and everything. I remember Dennis Hopper being drunk. I don't remember a lot about, about it. I'm trying not to recap the movie here. It's going to be one of those things like, oh, I remember this. Oh, I remember this. Oh, yeah, I remember this. Because I have seen the film. I know I've seen this film. And I wrote, know I really enjoyed it. So I'm looking forward to objectively watching it again and i really enjoy watching movies with you guys and i love our banter while we're talking my, my family hates watching movies with me now because you know i keep telling them i'm a professional podcaster it is my job <laughs> to talk during movies don't you know who i am <laughs> i'm sorry i just can't shut it off <laughs> i have 40 episodes of a podcast i'm kind of a big deal <laughs> yeah we know what we're doing now even though we totally didn't lose the most epic recording of an, of an epic selection section show ever. We are professionals, damn it! It was the best show never published. And uh, you can't say anything otherwise because you've never heard it. No, I'd say my expectations for this film are fairly high. I'm looking forward to watching it. I'm, again, like looking forward to watching it with you guys. So yeah, high bar. I know I'm going to enjoy it. So that's what I got. Tom, how about you? I'm going to hate watching this with you guys. It's going to be a miserable experience. It's just every time I watch a film with you, both of you, it's just like, oh my God, Tom, 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 pay attention, pay attention. I'm kidding, of course. I always love watching films, especially films I've never seen, whether good or bad or cheesy. I should say, whether good or cheesy. If, it, if I know it's going to be a bad film, I'm going to hesitate. But this one, I'm definitely looking forward to finally getting to see. My aunt had this back in the VHS days. The only scene I've seen of this is the um, basketball court measuring scene. Uh, and But I was a kid, so I so went So you off. haven't seen this? I have not seen this whatsoever. I am going in blind and happy for it. I don't think I would have liked it anyways as a kid. You know, it wasn't toys. It wasn't a cartoon. So I would not have had the patience for what is largely agreed upon to be a very basic by the numbers underdog sports film. I don't know whether it was by the numbers back in its day or, you know, if it's co codified those rules. It's more like it's codified. I mean, the formula has been copied because this this film's one of the first that really emphasized the underdog, small town, church going, God fearing town team goes to yeah, the finals. Yeah, and whatever. the ones we're all used to now with, um, oh God, we just throw a grenade and you hit 30 of those types of films anymore. Yeah. But no, knowing anything about the film personally, just if looking at the group of people that went in making this, um, David. And Spa, I apologize if I mispronounce your name. This, again, his first feature-length film. He would go on to direct Rudy, but before this, he did Hill Street Blues, Miami Vice, St. Elsewhere, 
Angelo Pizzo did not slanding before this, but would go on to do Rudy, my all American. So got pretty good at making sports films in terms of actors. I I think I said uh, Dustin Hoffman. I apologize if I did. It's Dennis Hopper, who we all agreed in several of the films we've seen with him. Aside from True Grit, where it's just like, oh, this this is Dennis Hopper. Everything we've seen him in has been just, he's the best part. Uh, Swing Vote, go listen to that episode. That movie was terrible. Hopper was criminally underutilized. Barbara Hershey, who plays Myra Fleener in this, uh, the teacher character that you see in so many high school sports films. Um, she was actually in The Right Stuff as Glennis Yeager. She oh, yeah, was, yeah, she is. Yeah, so we've seen her in that. She's also been in The Natural, Hannah and Her Sisters, which is a fantastic Woody Allen film. Love that. Uh, and would go on to do Tin Men and Last Temptation of Christ right after this. So she's got range. Looking at her IMDb, even her early stuff that looked pretty cheesy, grindhousey, I'd watch the heck out of that. So I hope we get to some more of her stuff later on. And Gene Hackman, though, I mean, he was an asshole, but he gives a good performance. Yeah, I would never want to be a director for him. I would never want to be a writer for him. Actually, I don't even think I'd want to act with him. But you know what? I love watching the guy. Yeah. No, I don't think I'm going to hate this film. I think I'm going to like it. That's the good thing about this film is the basketball players and some of the townsfolk were relatively unknown actors, or even some of them were actually like residents of the town. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, But they did a good job of casting three really strong actors in the lead roles. So it just, it really helps the film shine. Mm -hmm. That was forced on them too. Unlike with Winter Bone, where that was like a stylistic choice they wanted people that looked like they were from midwestern appalachia that sort of place uh they had to do it here which again i love that it's like that you have a small town use real small town people come on it makes sense you don't need acting skills to play basketball and sweat and then cheer for the team you just got to be there. Yeah. So I am looking forward to that. And I love knowing about this film and knowing what I'm getting into, but still not knowing the film itself. So this might be your Shawshank, because if you remember way back during Shawshank Redemption, I revealed I had never seen that movie. And everyone was like, oh, my God, you've never seen Shawshank Redemption? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, never seen the film. And I ended up like, you guys even noticed halfway through the episode, like, Dan's awfully quiet. <laughs> You know, it's like because I was watching the film, I was really into it. So this might actually end up being your Shawshank Redemption, where it's like it's a classic that seemingly everyone around you has seen. You've never seen it for one reason or another. It's not because you hate it or you don't have any interest in it. It's just it's never come across. Yeah, and yeah, it's kind of interesting. Or it could be True Grit, or where was yeah, like, it could be eh. your True Grit. We will find out soon, gentlemen. But I got a quick question. This is our fourth film with Dennis Hopper, isn't it? Uh, Cool Hand Luke, Swing, Swing Vote. Vote. Um, yeah, he was in Cool Hand Luke, and then he was in True Grit. In some, True, True, True Grit. Grit, and then this one. This one. So yes, Dennis Hopper. I think is our first four Pete. Dennis Hopper, you magnificent sob. Wherever you are in the afterlife. Yeah, I wonder if we'll see Dennis Hopper again. You'll have to listen to selection section number six to find out. Or, or at the beginning part of this episode. Yeah, we would know. We, yeah, well. <laughs> because and- we said it. <laughs> right, you'll figure it out. You'll figure it out. Which we usually don't try. We try to avoid. We didn't call you out on that. Or we did. We did totally call you out on that in this list. Well, it- during selection section episode. Like, harshly, harshly. You were in tears. Well, you did. You did. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, some of the things you said, Josh. I mean, I didn't. You weren't wrong. But it's just, dude. You would have said them different. I I was drunk. Um, I mean, I did. I did chug a entire bottle of wine while Dan was speaking his, and I just ranted and raved about it, how terrible it was. And Dan was in tears. I do apologize. I did apologize. Yeah, you said things to hurt. So speaking of segues, <laughs> thank um, you. Yes, <laughs> I I uh, think that uh, Tom lost a. Uh, quiz last week no you did i gave the quiz last week yeah but you still lost no i gave the quiz it's like saying alex trebek lost every single episode of jeopardy well he didn't get any of the questions right unless the judges told him 
Dan, I don't want to get into this again. Okay, I'm just saying. I was in tears last week during the selection section episode because you wouldn't stop. And you just had to keep digging that knife. I'm not doing this again. So, Dan, quiz now. (laughs) Wonderful segue, Josh. Did you rehearse that? (laughs) Over and over, in the mirror, every night. Dan, quiz now. Wow, I hope you had that written down. I need to come up with a theme song for this. Welcome to Dan Quiz Now. Dan Quiz Now. I did jazz hands. You couldn't see it. Okay. So the um, quiz here uh, does have rules the same way everything has rules. And the same way you're using Gene Hackman three times in a row is technically not a violation of the rules. Anyways. Technically. He's not. It's not. The rule is we don't use the same actor in a journey. This is a new journey. I know, I know. And we got into it last week. You'll have to listen to selection section six. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to get into this argument again because it went on way too long. It went on way too long. Anyways, so I didn't have time this week to do an elaborate trivia quiz with some trivia on either Dennis Hopper or uh, Gene Hackman like I wanted to. Really did, but I am going to talk a little bit about what some of people did think about this movie. But um, here's the thing. Most people agree that this is a Stone Cold classic, that this is just one of those films that everybody loves and everybody enjoys. Well, not everybody. Yeah, unless you're Gene Hackman. Yeah, apparently some of these reviews were written by Gene Hackman. So I'm going to just go ahead and preface this, that none of these reviews are above a six. Six is the highest one, so don't get us any number higher than six. And I'm just going to read a line or two from the review and I want you to tell me what the number is. Obviously, you get double points if you get it right on the money. I can, I can handle that, yeah. All right, so uh, let me find it. Okay. So he's writing the quiz no. right now. No, I, I was trying to find the one, the first one I wanted to open up. <laughs> okay. I could sum up this movie by quoting a very bad coach. Go out and try to score more points than the other guy. All right, who goes first on this? Oh, uh, I will say Tom, since Josh gave the quiz last week. All right. Um, could you repeat it once more? Okay. I could sum up this movie by quoting a very bad coach. Go out and try to score more points than the other guy. Six. Five. Josh is closest. It's a three-star review. I played it safe. You're going to be an <laughs> asshole this whole time, Josh. Oh, God. I see where this is going. Okay, Josh, ready? Fire away, Dan, let's go. All right. Hoo-ah! This one, I'm not even going to read a line from the review. I'm just going to read the title. Formulaic Drivel. Uh, three. See, this is going <laughs> to suck. He's just going to middle score this the whole time. You little sneak. <laughs> Strategery. <sighs> Jack Holery is what it is. I'm calling this one a two. Wait, what did you say, Josh? Three. Tom said two. It's actually a four. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, I should have. I knew it was going to be a four. <laughs> should have went with my instincts. All right, ask the question, bridge keeper. <laughs> okay. The movie was well done, but the content was annoying. If there ever was a race in a state in a sport that doesn't need any pity, it's white people in Indiana. <laughs> 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 Technically not wrong. I'm gonna... <laughs> okay, I'm going to say three now. I'm going to go four. Josh is closest. It's a six-star review. <laughs> te- <laughs> Technically, that means Technically, that means Josh wins. No, no, if I get the next two on the money, I can win this. That, this that's is true. true. That's true. That's yep. true. All right, all right. Okay. There were far too many problems with this movie to make it worthwhile. And I never did understand the depth of the sheer hatred that so many of the townsfolk had for Dale. This is definitely a movie Gene Hackman would like to forget. Josh, you've got the first one. Uh, do I go with my gut or do I play it safe? I play it safe. Three. Oh, damn it. I'm going to say one. It's right smack dab in the middle of your both answers. It's a two. Ah, uh, should have gone. I was going to say a two. Fuck. So now Josh wins because that one's actually a tie. Wait, no, is there, a, do we, do we have a tiebreaker though? Can we get a tiebreaker? Okay. What's a Hoosier? Yes. <laughs> Nobody knows what a Hoosier is. It's a trick question. I all right. All right. All right. Here's a tiebreaker. Tiebreaker question. Wait, how does this work? Uh, it's, a, it's only question four. 
The tiebreaker question is supposed to be if we're tied at the end of question five. Right. Okay. So okay, I don't, I don't, I didn't have anything set up for a tiebreaker in case you guys both got it right and smack dab. I would say just none of us get the point. Yeah, okay, okay, I'm, I'm fair with that one. Okay. But this next one has to be worth five points if we get it on the money. No. <laughs> Stop me if you heard this one. Gruff coach, dubious background, small town basketball, 1950s, hoorah. Tom, I think that's to you. I'm going to say six. Five. <laughs> Josh is closest. It's a two. <laughs> this is me flipping my chair. Now I just want to point this out, Tom, to you, just just to kind of just you know twist that knife a little bit. It's two weeks in a row you've been shut out. <laughs> it's not my longest losing uh, streak. In yeah, this. but you haven't scored a point in two weeks. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh. <laughs> You know what? Tom, play the music. All right, line them up. Welcome back to the fire pit. I am, as always, your interspersal host, editor, and head coach, Tom. And I want to see you do double sprints from here to the next show. All right, that should keep him busy for a bit. And speaking of busy, thanks for keeping busy with us as we start our Groundhog Day Parade to Punxsutawney and our final journey for our very first season of The Fire Pit. It's been clowns and aliens and superheroes, but we couldn't think of a better way to end this season than with a Bill Murray. But you can't get to finals without a bit of practice, so let's check in on our team and see how their own practice is going. <sighs> Dan, I cannot believe you signed us up for a podcast intramural basketball game. Honestly, I can't believe we actually played it. Can you believe how well we did, too? Dude, it was super freaking intense. Oh, it was such a close game. It was definitely, 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 definitely. <sighs> okay, okay. We got five seconds left in this game. Rob's custom PCs is down one person. Their best player is injured. They have no timeouts. Podcast scouts are in the audience. We can get this. Whew. We just got to stay motivated. So, Dan, what's the plan, Dan? Okay. All right, Tom, you inbounds the ball to me. I'll dribble quick up the court. Josh, I want you to set up a post, run a screen, and that'll give me a shot to lay it right up. Okay, I got it. What's inbounds? Oh, for fuck's sake. Just get me the ball. Wait, so no Dan plan. Just get me the ball. Definitely, 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 definitely not a close game. Felt like it to me. Yeah, we scored a few points. We lost by 56. The only two points we scored was by the other team. Accidentally, because they were laughing and took pity on us. My mom says I'm a winner. Wiener. She said wiener. Oh. I'm sure they'll turn things around come the stinger. But if you're looking to get things turned around for your company with a bit of advertising, or just want to give us pointers on what to watch and how to watch it, feel free to email us at curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. That's curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. Just put fire pit in the subject line, as well as what you're emailing about, then give us a roundabout. You know, what you have for your ad and would like us to say about it, destination or path recommendations you'd like us to try, comments about past paths and comments about our comments regarding the movies from those pasts, so on and so on. Then we'll take the ball, pass it four times, take it to the rim, 
shoot it over the billboard, past the bleachers, towards the turnpike, then never let you know if it made it to the net. If you don't see yourself miss a shot, then you make every shot. But that email again is curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com, capital C, capital C, capital E, capital I, at gmail.com. Oh shit, they're starting to dribble into traffic again. I gotta go run and teach them the fundamentals of dodging cars. Thank y'all for listening, and as always, good luck! <whistles> hey, you hill jacks! Don't! Don't dribble towards the truck! No! That's how we lost last year's team. <laughs>
Give me the ball. <laughs> <laughs> he's the town drunk, right? No, he's the mayor. Tom, has anybody ever told you it's very rude to harass somebody just asking a simple question? It just makes you seem like less of a person. <laughs> You're right, Josh. My apologies. Thank you. You're welcome. Now go fuck yourself. And Hollywood Eagle number two. Man, they're getting use out of that sound effect. Are there any eagles in Indiana? That three. Number three. Holy cow. It's the same eagle just flying in circles. Following Gene Hackman. Well, you're the swing, man. Jimmy, you're so all right. All right. Well, should be open swing around here in that fence. Too many metaphors. What did he say? <laughs> slow clap. Oh, I thought she was going to do a slow clap. Slow clap. Someone lead a slow clap. Come on. Slow clap wasn't invented until 1991. Ah. The uh, coach is uh, dismissed by a vote of 68 to 45. I think we should vote again. <laughs> okay, calm down, Trump. <laughs> He's testing Hopper. Yeah. I like his character in this film. Why did he think this film was going to suck? I don't know, because he gives it a fantastic performance in the movie. He's yeah. so good in this. Gene Hack person is one of those guys who comes off like, no matter what, he, he may not like the script, but he's going to give 110%. He's just going to let you know about it the whole time. He's only got shards of glass in his body. It's fine. He can still play. I wonder if that actually happened. Indiana high school basketball in the 50s? Probably. How back then, that was, he was probably lucky to only get shoved through a trophy case. Dude, to this day, that state still takes basketball to, like, another level. Oh, when there's nothing but corn and cows. Yeah, porn is a major uh, industry in Indiana. I said corn with a C, but you're also not wrong, Josh. <laughs> If you put your effort and concentration into playing to your potential to be the best that you could be, I don't care what the scoreboard says, at the end of the game, in my book, we're going to be winners. Okay? There we go. We got our slow clap. Come on, Josh, Dan, come on. This is a slow clap. Dan, I'm not hearing a slow clap from you. There we go. Now go kill Superman. Wait, sorry. Wrong <laughs> film. Didn't know they were so small down on the phone. Yeah, well, your mom's a whore. <laughs> yeah, seriously. I scratch my balls before shaking his hand. Now when he picks his nose, it's going to be my balls up his nose. Also a legitimate thing I can see hack person doing. <laughs> is it like the, um, is this like the shining where it turns out all of them were dead? <laughs> Maybe the real state championship was the friends we made along the way. <laughs> no, it wasn't. See, if I was the coach at any of these, you know how the coach always starts off losing? Yes. That would just be my entire story. They'd be like, Don't worry. like, I would be like the reverse optimistic of uh, that one. It's like everybody would be like, it's okay to lose the first one. He's just getting his flow going. Then I would never win. <laughs> <laughs> it would go to credits. They never even made the playoffs. <laughs> he was fired. Two games into the next year. <laughs> Josh, the coach, the true, true underdog story. I wonder, like, if Gene Hackman told him, like, I hope you have some money saved because this movie's going to be a career killer. It's going to be a shit fest. And Dennis Hopper's like, ha, joke's on you. In like seven years, I'm making Mario Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> and now, back to the episode. So, Hoosiers. So, the film starts in rural. 1952 in a uh, town in Indiana where they hired a brand new coach by the name of Gene Hackman. I'm sorry, that wasn't his name. His name was Coach Norman Dale. Norman Dale, his name wasn't Coach, who was a former college basketball coach that apparently got fired for hitting a uh, kid on his team, which nobody knew about because Google hadn't been invented yet. But he starts coaching in the way that they aren't very happy with. Kids quit the team and he is okay with this because he will not have back talking on his team. He's coaching them and then making them run drills and not playing or scrimmaging like they should be according to all the dads around because the dads know how to play. They played in high school. It gets to the point where they lose their first game. He lays down a few rules and heavily enforces them, much to his detriment 
because those high school educated dads, and I say high school education, not as high school diploma, but because they played basketball in high school. They uh, wanted to vote him out of being the coach, but then the kid who everybody wanted to play, he decided to play, but only for Lex Luthor, I mean, Norman Dale. And then after that, they started winning, and then they kept winning, montages and montages. And then there was a couple fights. Dennis Hopper got drunk, because after he was selected to be the assistant coach, and then uh, he did a great job in the last two minutes of a game, and he won the game for them. Um, he got kicked out of a game, and then he ended up living in a van down by the river, or he was drunk or something. In the end, they won their games. They made it all the way to state, and they played on a basketball court. It was the exact same size as the basketball court back home. So they beat the evil team, and credits rolled. The end. But uh, that was the summary, and um, I think we are now on to final thoughts. So, Thompson, do you want to take this ball and run with it? One heck of a montage there, Josh. Don't dribble it on dirt, because as Dan pointed out, I don't know, I wasn't listening. <laughs> I, 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 well, no, my coach has told me that I don't run with the ball, Josh. I dribble with the ball. So I will gladly dribble this ball down the court. And to my thoughts about this film, which we, we saw what happened. <laughs> No, you kicked the ball. Duh. Why the ball didn't bounce? <laughs> but no, I loved this film. It's, I think what I really liked about this, why, I mean, yeah, it's cliche. It's absolutely paint by the numbers, you know, underdog sports story that we've seen so many times and probably has, was trope heavy for you before this even codified tropes. I'd love to see some sports films made before this movie, just to see how many, how prevalent some of those tropes were. I mean, come on. I, I, I have a whole check sheet from this. You had the assistant coach have a heart attack and be taken out. You had to have the underdog coach. Um, I mean, this, the main coach here, Gene Hackman's character, he was the jerk ass with a heart of gold. You had him romancing the teacher and there's belligerence going on there. You have the ace player that joins the team and turns things around. You had dramatic family life from one of the characters. You even had the damn slow clap. So for this, nothing surprising, nothing we haven't seen a hundred times before, as I said, but as we noted previously, it's not how complicated the story is, but how well it's executed that matters. And they executed this very well. As we noted watching this, I would love, I would love to pick Hackman's, Hack person's brain, excuse me, and find out why the hell he thought this film was going to suck. Maybe because it was just so cliche. Maybe it was, but points to the director. He kept things grounded. Both him and the writer kept things so close to the vest in terms of realism. Hackman's character was, yeah, he was a hard-ass coach, but he was reasonably hard. He wasn't outlandishly rough and tough with them. He, nothing was cartoonish about this. The team wasn't cartoonishly bad. They had their own way of doing things, but they were competent. They knew how to play the game. It's like they had played it their whole lives. Surprise, surprise. And I think that's what really made the story work, was it kept it as true to the original story as it could. There wasn't any substantially obsess excessive Hollywood moments that you see so many sports films today, maybe even before this film. I can see how this movie would become the template for other ones like Rudy. Um, I saw a lot of Major League in this film, but again, Major League definitely um, cartoonishly brought that in. But then again, Major League was like a tale of someone trying to screw over a team. But all oh, the story was good. Everything was great about this. I'm disappointed that it didn't find its audience in the beginning like it should have. But you know what? Quiet films like these often don't get noticed right away, especially when you're up against, you know, pure Kino like 
Friday or yeah, Nightmare Le- Nightmare on Elm Street Three: The Dream Warriors. I have some other thoughts about the cinematography and other such, but I don't want to hog the ball, so I'm going to pass it on over to Josh. Josh, what are your thoughts about this film? Well, I'm going to field goal this home run right into the end zone. So, uh, so many things wrong about that. <laughs> well, um, I'm going to start off by saying I like this movie. It's a good, well put together movie. I wanted to make a lot of jokes in my summary because as I was watching it, saying like uh, white guy A and white guy one, just you know, play into that uh, joke a little bit more because I didn't touch on that enough during uh, the movie itself. But I found myself not wanting to do that because I felt like I really connected to the characters as I was watching this film. And I felt that that would have been a disservice to the characters in the film to, to do that. Because at the point you was able to identify with each of them and call most of them by name by the end of the film, like they did a good job of building the characters. So I, I did enjoy it. I really enjoyed the film, but yeah, it was very cliche. And I want to say that I didn't feel the same way I felt the first time watching this film. Again, it's been like 20 some odd years. I think it was in the late 90s when I first watched it with my dad and mom. Like I wasn't as excited watching it. I didn't I remember I was I was very pumped to watch this that that last time. Maybe this is a little bit of a voice of dissension on this, but I found myself bored a couple of times through the film. Like I was actually grabbing my phone and scrolling on Reddit and whatnot as I was watching the movie cuz I just felt like I wasn't missing anything. But this time, but it may also be because the movie is And I don't want to say it's cliched because at the time the cliches hadn't been established um, because this one established a lot of them. As far as I know, I'm not really into sports films. I do like a good sports movie. I know I joke that I don't know a lot about sports, but I I do love a good sports film. But yeah, I just I felt myself getting bored here and there watching the film because it's like nothing you haven't seen, at least in parody form here or there. I'm definitely not trying to hate on the movie. It was a good movie. Um, definitely well put together, well acted. Oh my God. Dennis Hopper was so fantastic in, uh, his role in this film. And it's like Dan pointed out, this is our fourth, uh, Dennis Hopper film, even the small role he had in cool hand Luke and true grit. I mean, he was such a different character in each one of those films. Like Dennis Hopper was truly a good actor. Cause I mean, Gene Hackman, I mean, we've seen three films with Gene Hackman and it's just Gene Hackman playing Gene Hackman as best as Gene Hackman can play Gene Hackman. Gene Hack person, I'm sorry. Um, yes, get it right, Josh. And I said his name a lot there, but uh, <laughs> it, it was. It, yeah, I really don't have much more to say about it. I did enjoy it. I did feel myself getting kind of bored here and there. I'm repeating myself. Dan, what about you? What'd you think? You got to unmute yourself. What? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I will say you guys are are kind of harping on the cliches of this movie. But this movie started a lot of those cliches. Before this movie was made, sports movies were kind of um, not all underdog stories or where the underdog wins the title or the game or whatever. Maybe the biggest example of the underdog winning would be before this movie was made would be Rocky. Although in Rocky 2, he comes back and wins. But he, he in the first one, he doesn't actually win. So spoiler alert for anyone who hasn't seen a 40-year-old movie. But I was I would say that I don't think that's kind of a fair criticism. I can see why, because it's been done so much now that it's kind of like, you know, but um, I will say my thoughts of this movie was I haven't seen this movie in a while, at least not in the last year or so. And I forgot how much I love this movie. It's a really I just love how it's just a good character movie. And it's kind of a movie equivalent of a bottle episode. Like almost the whole movie takes place in this small town, with the exception when they go to the big game in Indiana or Indianapolis. So um like it, so the movie's kind of contained to only these few characters and just now I know that most movies only take place in one or two settings, but this movie just kind of feels very not claustrophobic. Cause that was what I said about the shootest. This movie just definitely feels quaint, quaint. There we go. Quaint. This movie feels quaint. Um, and I, I really think that that works to it. I, 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 Tom mentioned at the opening that we, that they, the budget was cut. So they had to film or they had to hire like a lot of, townsfolk as extras and high school kids as extras and whatnot. And I actually think that works to the film's strength. It it feels like a small town. It doesn't feel like a Hollywood version of a small town. I didn't play high school sports, but my my brother did. And I was telling my brother a couple days ago that we were going to watch Hoosiers for the podcast tonight. And he actually mentions the scene where Gene Hackman comes into the barber shop 
and all the dads are talking about how, oh, this is how I would do on the run the team, or this is how we do things in this town, or, you know, you can't run man-to-man defense. You got to run zone. That's the only thing that works. Tony says that his high school football coach would get that all the time, and he was a state-winning football coach. He had proven that he was a winner. He knew how to win. He had kids that would be recruited to major colleges like Ohio State and Michigan and Wisconsin and, like, Notre Dame like he had kids that came out of his school scouted by major colleges which is like I win games all the time you know I know what I'm doing that's why I I I love this movie's authenticity it really does feel like a small town in Indiana Indiana that um it's so committed to its basketball team that the, the town thinks they know how to run it better than the coach that they hired and are paying to run the team and I love that because sometimes when Hollywood makes a movie that takes place in a small town, they up the small town stereotypes. They, they make them almost like slack jawed yokels. And that's really not what small towns are. Yeah. There's small towns that are like that, but th- most small towns are not. They're just, you know, people that really haven't, and especially in 1954, a lot of those people haven't been too far outside of their County line, you know, so they don't really know the big world around them. So this, this high school basketball team, basketball, is kind of their escape. That's like one of the only things they have other than their, their farms. And maybe there there was a factory town, maybe a factory or a lumber mill or something to that degree. That's what I love the most about this movie. It feels so real and it feels so authentic. And I think the movies made 1984, 85, and they did such a great job of capturing 1954. Like I don't see too many modern gaffes in the movie. Like they don't use a whole lot of slang from the eighties, which is a nice touch. Um, I didn't see any technology or any styles of dress that were prevalent in the 80s, but not really there in the 50s. You know, one little detail is like the, the kids' basketball shoes. They're not Nike sneakers. They're Converse sneakers, which is what they wore back then. They didn't have the big athletic shoes. In fact, that didn't become a big thing until Michael Jordan got popular. So those are my initial final thoughts on this film. I just, I love the authenticity of it. I, I forgot how authentic and how real it feels. And I love that about this movie and the performances were solid too, but you guys kind of touched on the performances. So I just wanted to talk about what I felt about the authenticity of this film. You, you made a comment about our comments about the cliches, but I think both of us even noted what you said as well that uh, we noted that the cliches were started with this film. Yeah, I know. I know. I, I just kind of wanted to, Give my two cents on it. Yeah, and I think a lot of it, too, is it didn't play into a lot of the uh, traps or the, the, the things you normally would see. Uh, we talk about the cliches again, what they didn't use, such as the hothead rivals or anything along those lines or the major villains. There really wasn't a villain in this film, was there? Yeah, or even a rival team that they built up to or foreshadowed. I mean, I'm sure they mentioned it a couple times, but I don't know if there was like that big rival team that they had to get through to get there. Um, yeah. The only one that comes close is the, um, the team they play at the end is the, I think they were called like South Bend state or South Bend. Yeah, They definitely built them up a little bit, but they but, weren't like the reoccurring villain. No, but they made it, made a big deal of mentioning like they were two or three times state champion. Like they were on their, they were trying to win their third in a row or something like that. Like, I know they made that comment about, it's like, what do you think about their starting line being six, four, six, five and six, five. Yeah. But, but that, they reached that. That yeah. wasn't like a four shadowed anything there was no major character deaths no you know foreshadowed or occurring tragedies outside of uh dennis hopper's character yeah but but he doesn't die like i think if they made this movie today dennis hopper's character would have died halfway through the film Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like i really no no he would have came back for the state game. yeah or or that one or the other but the fact that they keep him away from the state game for they they would have killed off the uh guy who was in bed in the beginning of the film the original assistant coach they would have killed him off. Mm-hmm. But no, it's like, that was one thing I did appreciate about this film. They kept Dennis Hopper out. After he basically uh, was off the bandwagon, He, uh, they kept him out. Like, yeah. they didn't bring him back in some glorious return or anything like that. Or one, They didn't give him his redemption arc. Right. Tom, you also mentioned early in the film, while we were watching, and you were talking about just a second ago, they didn't fall into the usual traps that these movies would bring about now, these cliches. Mm-hmm. Um the team is relatively competent when he takes over. Like they kind of already, he doesn't have to teach them how to play basketball. They already know how to play basketball. He doesn't have to go over and teach them the fundamentals. It's almost like a, he, the, the sculpture is almost halfway done. He just has to chisel out the rough parts or sand or sand down the rough. Part. I don't know. I don't sculpt, but it's like he's either got to sand down the rough edges or get the rough edges out, but they already know how to play basketball. So it's not like they're a completely, totally incompetent team of, of five foot two, uh, 
you know, Dunderheads. Dunderheads. Yeah, Dunder. I was kind of thinking of idiots or whatever. Like they don't, they know how to play basketball. And I like that. You mentioned that early in the film. Like these guys already know how to play. He's not teaching them how to play basketball. He's just teaching them how to play basketball good. Kind of like, yeah, reinforcing the fundamentals and whatnot. And none of you are Michael Jordan. You are a team. So play like a team. Yeah. Yeah. It's like uh, if this movie was kind of made today or had some of the cliches, it would have opened up with him coming into the gym and him passing a ball to one of the players and the player not being able to catch it, like completely missing it or hitting him square in the face. Or it's just not otherwise like he's like, oh, my God, my team is terrible. <laughs> like, yeah, one of the players would have had like a redemption story of some kind. Yeah. Well, technically. Technically, they did have that. Now that you mention it, that um, that tiny kid, um, oh, Cletus or Otis or o- Opie or Ollie, Ollie, Ollie. That was his name. His wasn't so much a redemption story. His was more of a coming of age story. The redemption story is actually Dennis Hopper's son because he, he, he starts off the film kind of resentful of his father, hateful of his father. He even tells the coach when he gives him a chance to be an assistant. And he tells the coach, he's like, you know, he goes, he's just going to screw up. That's all he does. That's all he knows how to do is screw up. He's just going to screw up and he's going to embarrass everybody. But the coach, he was not wrong. He wasn't wrong, but, but when his dad does inevitably screw up and be an embarrassment, his son actually forgives him and tells him he loves him. And you know, so Mm -hmm. that, that's kind of your redemption story there. I would honestly say that going back to my uh, comment about the characters and how they built it up in this film, it's like the team itself is like a character in the film. And that's what was developed. Mm -hmm. Like not any individual member of the team was better than anybody else or got more screen time, so to speak. It's like the team was the character and we got to see the team grow. Yeah. And there wasn't any interpersonal drama between them. You didn't have like Johnny, you're always a hard shot hogging the ball. You got to pass it to me. And Billy, no, we've never been, we haven't been the same since your sister broke up with me back in junior high, bibbidi bop and all that stuff. And like, yeah. Yeah, now that you point that out, that's uh, another trap it did not fall into. Yeah, I kind of thinking back on the film, I think that's very well done on how they manage that. I mean, obviously, you nowadays you got to have drama, so it's like, but making the team the character and the team grow. I think, like, just to you know, people that know more about sports than we do, and I'm I'm probably the biggest sports fan of the three of us, but even I don't know that much about. A lot of sports outside of American football. Well, you got to keep in mind you that you got to keep as much Star Trek trivia as you do football knowledge, and it's one or the other. But you try, you find a good way to balance it out. Yeah, sometimes, but you know, Star Trek. Well, I I, I wouldn't say Star Trek's never disappointed, but um, because <laughs> that's a fundamental lie. Even Nemesis, <laughs> especially the most recent episode of Discovery. No, I was going to say that uh, I was looking up stuff for this movie before we watched it, and all the major sports websites like Bleacher Report. ESPN.com ranked this movie number one of all sports movies ever. Almost all of them to a man ranked this movie number one. And they had hundreds of sports movies to choose from. And I can kind of see why, because it really does feel like it could have actually had, well, it was kind of based on a true story. So it, it kind of feels real. You know what I mean? So I can see why the people who know sports still rank this movie high as, as in such high esteem. Well, yeah, I mean, this yeah, definitely like all of the aspects of this film kept it more grounded, I think. It's like going back to Days of Thunder or Top Gun. I don't know why I said the same movie twice, but um, <laughs> but um, but uh, you know, like Days of Thunder. Remember how we said that people who knew NASCAR hated the film? Yeah, it's like you know when something is Hollywooded up. Yeah, and, and it, this movie didn't have any of that. So, or it had minimal amounts of it to the point where it felt more like watching something. I don't want to say for watching a home video, but it didn't feel like watching a movie. It felt like being, it, it, you know what? A great analogy. It felt like beat rooting for your high school team. Yeah. yeah. And the cinematography helped that too, because it didn't overdo anything. It felt grounded. It was almost like watching a sports highlight reel in a lot of spots. I mean, yeah, there was like the dramatic moments were shot dramatically the way they needed to be, but it wasn't excessive or garish. I, which it didn't distract. It was about the characters and the team and the, the moments you needed to pay attention to. It paid attention to the rest. It just let you absorb the whole thing. Yeah. And then the, the, the mini, the mini arcs that are going on throughout the movie, the love interest with Barbara Hershey's character, the redemption story with um, Dennis Hopper's journey through trying to get over alcoholism, but failing like, you know, and that actually that's true. Of a lot of addicts, a lot of addicts don't 
succeed in kicking their habit the first time or the fourth time or even the 20th time. That's kind of realistic. And I like that. Um, but I loved how all the little mini arcs throughout the whole movie, none of them felt forced. None of them felt like they were put in there because we have to have them in there. You know, the, the love interest kind of happens naturally. Like they kind of warm up to each other through mutual respect and then mutual attraction. And, and I like that. I really, really, really like that about the movie. Because, I mean, we've watched a couple of movies over the last few weeks where like the love interest just kind of feels pointless and completely unnecessary. I go back to the shootist. Like his relationship with the woman in the movie, uh, Lauren Bacall, pointless. Pointless. Makes no sense. Well, it doesn't know that it makes no sense. It's just the way they, they wrote it in the movie is pointless. Same with like his relationship with Ron Howard's character in The Shootist. Pointless. Stupid. Forced. It's like, why does Ron Howard care? Like, especially when they find out he's got cancer. Like, well, he didn't tell me. You've known him for 20 minutes. Yeah. Why are you getting so weepy about this? And this movie's kind of the opposite of that. Where it's all the characters gradually, be, you know work through their problems and it doesn't take just one scene or one little moment where the light bulb goes off and all of a sudden, Oh, Oh. And then that whole, like, did we just become best friends? Yes. Like they don't have a stupid Martha moment. There we go. And that's what I loved about it. Like um, even the guy who tries to get him kicked off the team, the one that was coaching the team for a little bit before he showed up, he was running the practices. Um, the major league guy, the actor from major league, we pointed out at the very beginning of the movie, mm -hmm. like, he eventually opens up to, or not open up, he eventually warms up to Gene Hackman's way of coaching. And, his, and he goes from sitting in the stands, just glaring at the team, to, to enjoying it and cheering and being part of it. And realizing that, hey, this guy's coaching a winning team. And he begins to respect him. But that happens over the long course of the movie. It's not one speech or one little line of dialogue or, or not even a forced moment where he saves the puppy from drowning or something. It's something like, did we just become best friends? So, yeah. I just like that. I like natural character progression. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And this film definitely had all of it. And then some of the dramatic moments weren't excessively dramatic. When um, Hopper's character comes in drunk and interrupts the game, it was treated as realistically as possible. But uh, nothing, nothing was overly done. Yeah. Aside from the score, which was very 80s in a lot yeah. of spots. Yeah. As I was noting to Josh when we were watching this, uh, aside yeah, synthetic, from uh, synth I mean, synthetic synthesis to the whatever yes <laughs> speaking of star trek the movie was done by known star trek composer jerry goldsmith yes and again he almost won an oscar for this and he would go on to do the score for rudy too and uh yeah. definitely god rest his soul god rest his soul yes so so, but I've said everything i can say about would would you guys recommend this film to other people absolutely absolutely oh, yeah, even i think even if you don't like sports even if you don't like basketball like, even if you think it's the dumbest thing to watch on television, I would recommend this movie. You need to see this movie at least once. It's a good, uplifting movie. It's a nice story. It's quaint. It's it's nice. It's a good movie. 10 out of 10. Josh is a non-sportsy. Would you also recommend Hoosiers to a non-sportsy? Well, like I said, I like sports movies. So, yeah, I would recommend this movie. And I'll third it. Yep. I, if you haven't seen this film yet, give it a shot. We liked it. And we think you'll like it, too. A good movie with good acting and a good director and good storytelling will transcend your like or dislike of a certain genre, whether it's sports or like in my case, like I, I can't get through the Lord of the Rings books. Yeah, mm -hmm. Don't at me, don't at me, but <laughs> I, I can't get through them. I've never been able to read them and I can't get through the Hobbit either. I think they're boring fantasy dragons, all that crap it's never appealed to me one bit. I think the Lord of the Rings trilogy is the best trilogy put to film period. So Okay, you redeemed yourself at the end of that, Dan. I could hear our numbers just grinding <laughs> down. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, those are three very well put together movies. I, I love, but we're not, we'll get to those someday. I promise we'll get to those someday. But um, yeah, other, but when we're talking about this movie, I would absolutely recommend this movie, mm -hmm. even if you don't like sports. That's uh, unanimous on that one. Nigel, excellent choice for a starter film on our Groundhog Day March to Punxsutawney. Parade. You're, you're right. Groundhog <laughs> Day Parade to Punxsutawney. The goddamn parade. Well, I mean, I've said all I can say about this film. Josh, Tom, you guys got anything else you want to add? No, I think I hit all my notes and then some. Mm -hmm. Fant what about you, Josh? 
No, I'm sorry. Yeah. Nope. All right. Well, I guess that does it for tonight's show. Um, as a reminder, you can find us on Spotify, iTunes, Amazon, or wherever you get your podcasts. Um, be sure to like and subscribe as it really does help the podcast out. Leave a review. We got a funny one. So uh, please just, you know, help us out. Uh, join the party. We're, we're, you join the fire pit and yeah, and have fun. Now that you mentioned that, I've got to read this one. Um, and keep in mind, this isn't from my mom, who I'm a little disappointed hasn't left me a written review yet. But uh, this is uh, thank you, Pod Diddy, for giving us our first and so far only five star written review. He titled his review, Finding This Was Kismet. I proposed during my first listen to this podcast. She said, who are you? And found a different seat on the bus. It just, it's so relevant. The Fire Pit Podcast, helping strangers on a bus somewhere in America find love or find restraining orders. We are here for all walks of life. Slow clap rising to an an emphatic clap. Yes. Yes. So, yes. Pod Diddy, thank you. Thank you. We appreciate that review, and we appreciate your listening patronage to our podcast. As a disclaimer, though, we do not recommend stalking strangers on a bus while listening to our podcast. <laughs> no, um, he never stalked. He proposed. Okay, but I'm just saying. I, I, <laughs> I'm just saying. Dan doesn't recommend stalking, but Dan recommends proposing. Yeah, just blind proposals for everybody. If you're single and you're you're I don't know desperate and you're in your 30s, hey, you never know. That woman may have been incredibly annoying. She could have been one of those people who holds the phone on speaker and talks to oh it. Oh, my God. And you know, she's like, will that. you marry me? And she's like, oh, this bastard just t- proposed to me. I'm leaving. I just I feel wronged by him. And yeah. then she got up and left. And he was like, ah, oh, yeah. silence. And he put his headphones back on. He says, now to hear what they think about Pathfinder. And, <laughs> you know, so... <laughs> Well, and he just redacted his review. <laughs> no, 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 no. If it's a five-star review, he definitely listened to Pathfinder or uh, Swashbuckler. I promise you, if it's yes, a five-star yes. review, he listened to one of those two episodes. Maybe maybe Dead Calm. Maybe Dead Calm. But Pod Diddy, please be sure to join us on Discord and have some fun interacting with us, too. We'd love to chat with you because you clearly have an amazing sense of humor. And there's other people on there, too, who are kind of funny. Not Tom. Tom is incredibly boring on Discord. Yeah, if you want to go to school, talk to Tom on Discord. Hey, I asked one question about what to name a ranking. And then you Discord. asked for an essay question and then talking points. And then you started giving grades out. Yeah. But, like specific um, I, examples. I, hey, Gene Hackman expects perfection from his players. I can only ask the same from our discordance. Is that a thing? You notice is after that he writes that, everybody's just like quiet. Like, did, did he Did he really just... <laughs> do that tom conver- tom british name thompson conversation killer captain buzzkill <laughs> but uh <laughs> yes do join us on discord we promise tom won't bore you to death but uh, you can also find us on facebook and follow us on twitter we try to do the social media we're not very good at it but we try but if you would like to have an essay question a proper intelligent Nay, educated conversation, or you just feel the need to reach out to us old school style, uh, you can also email us. As mentioned back in the interspersal segment, you can also use that to talk sponsorship or any other feedback or submissions or route recommendations. The links to the email and all social media in the episode's description at firepit.podbean.com. Awesome. And uh, I would like to give a special shout out to always Peggy, friend of the channel, OG friend of the channel. Uh, always thank you for listening. Thank you for the feedback. We love you to pieces. Um, so great. And um, also a special shout out to my family, uh, because thanks to the pandemic, I have not seen any of you since uh, early October. Maybe, yeah, maybe yeah, well, no, mid-October was the last time I saw any of you. And I forget what your faces look like, and I miss you guys, but I know that we're doing this because hopefully next year we'll be better. So shout out to the family, And but I'm glad you're listening. And uh, I would like to shout out uh, Tom's mom for listening to our Shootist episodes, even though she had words with him, apparently. Um, <laughs> I, I like to say input, feedback, input, if you would. Input, feedback, yes. Um, also shout out to my wife um, for putting up with me over my week off while she had to work and uh everything else she's too good for me and uh my parents 
again because I don't know anybody else. I would shout out Tom and Dan, but I don't want it to go to their heads. Tom, 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 he gave me a shout out. I know. <laughs> he knows us. It's okay, guys. Calm down. It's like he's talking right to us. It's, it's like it's like we're part of the podcast too. <laughs> no, right? <laughs> Can't wait to tweet about this. Be sure to add us at at firepitcce. <laughs> yes, and I'd like to thank all the people who have touched base with us, uh, whether through Twitter, Discord, or just in person, and provided us uh, input and thoughts on the show. Um, I appreciate uh, one from Julie last name withheld who uh noted going back to the shootist um that um they enjoyed listening and disagreeing with us about some of our opinions they were a fan of john wayne and noted that um it was one of the most honest portrayals of john wayne um as he really was and the pacing was supposed to exemplify that and the solemnity behind it but they enjoyed the episode even if we didn't enjoy the movie itself so thank you for that and for those who have not joined in the conversation, feel free to give us opinions about past or future or current episodes, whether you agree with us on the thoughts or have additional thoughts that say, yes, you were absolutely right. But for those people who have not given us any feedback, I want to shout out to you. And personally, I want to shout out to our latest Facebook follower, Robert A. They now join now Facebook uh, excuse me, now Fire Pit Facebook alumni such as Sean A. and De Mario. Again, I'm stemming from last names for now in case you know I hear back say, oh, you're fine. Give us the last names. We're good. You know, I don't want to just blast them out for the random internet to hear and such and such because, you know, we're such a big deal right now. I mean, oh, my God. But thank you all for your joining us. And all of you other growing numbers of followers for joining us and helping to keep this fire pit burning. And before I get to the usual outro, I do want to say we're really sorry we didn't get a selection section episode out for this journey. Um, we had. I'm pick- really sorry they couldn't hear it because it was epic. Yeah, it was good. It, it was. It, I'm not lying. I mean, it was. Go- it was going to be really good. And we are heartbroken. We had some technical difficulties. Um, but lesson learned, uh, we no longer put Char Tom in charge of anything. Um, and it, we're going to be better for it. Uh, no, all joking aside, we're, we're really sorry. We, we, we love doing those episodes. We love slowly revealing our lists of what we want to do. And, um, the three of us campaign for each other's list or, or, or our list personally and say, Hey, I want to go with this one. I want to go with that one. I want to go with that one. And then we, we talk up the other one's list. It's such, they're fun episodes. They, we, we, really enjoy it and we're really sorry we don't get to have one this time but um i guess you're just gonna have to find out the journey in real time uh or you know listen to the hype section at the beginning of every episode so that being said uh josh where are we going next week i mean we're we're leaving a small town in indiana where are we going we're leaving a small town in indiana and we're gonna get on a bus and that bus can't go any slower than Ooh. 55 miles an hour. Oh, is this a bus in Columbus? Because that's actually... <laughs> well, we're going to get our Sandra Bullock on, and uh, we're going to Keanu Reeves the shit out of this movie. And uh, we're going to get high on speed. Wait, wrong wrong thing. Cocaine. We're going to get high on cocaine and watch speed. Why do you sound like a cowboy? Why, Josh, why do you sound like John Wayne? Did I you, what... will kill you, Tom. <laughs> really shooting at the hip there josh i'm no gene hackman but by god yeah for for those who need some translation we're we're following dennis hopper to speak he'll be our first five p in the in the fire pit thank you dan because uh i didn't say that apparently no you didn't you mentioned all the other actors except for dennis hopper at speed i said speed like four times i know you did but you never said dennis hop that was great professional podcasters we are so good at this 40 episodes in well you forgot about our epic 40th episode selection oh yeah 41 episodes in we are professionals we've only lost one episode (laughs) 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 and we're sorry it wasn't one of the shittier ones it was no i'm sorry it was it was too pure for this world it was too pure for this world it was too good Mm -hmm. And you better and it, believe that that yeah. is going it, like the top. It was so good. You're going to hear about that selection section all this journey. You will every episode recap. Yes, we laughed. We learned. Yeah, we loved. It was perfect episode. 
Yeah. I'm just sad that nobody's ever going to hear my lists and your guys' reactions to my lists. Tom, when you cried, when I uh, revealed my second list, that was just, that was emotional for me. It was emotional for everyone, John. I had to, I mean, when you guys chose my list, I had to, I mean, I had to take like 10 minutes to collect myself. That was the applause and, in general. Just yeah. Stop and, clapping. I mean, I, and like, I just, I had to take 10 minutes to just collect myself. I put myself on mute because I just, I didn't want the audience to hear me get so emotional about it. Spoiler alert, we unmuted him and we listened to him sob for that 10 minutes. Did. I, I I mean sobbed but yeah it was like ugly crying mm, but that was it was pure crying Josh because Dan's like I was saying Dan is not a praying man for out those out there but the the, yeah. the prayer he gave to God for that moment it, it made me find religion again for that it moment. was Toby it was Toby Maguire in the Spider-Man movies kind of blubbering you know just even though I'm Spider-Man so yeah I know <laughs> and you know what else has gone on for too long this, this outro. outro. So we're going to watch Speed. Like after following Dennis Hopper, I Dan's been Dan. <laughs> we'll see you next week when we watch Speed. Until then, I've been Dan. I've been Josh. I've been Tom. Thank you for listening. This has been a production of Curtain Call Entertainment LLC. Good luck out there. <laughs>get me the ball. Uh, you know what? Fine. We're down by 58 points. I mean, it, it, it couldn't hurt. Just like the movies. All right. Let's do this. Josh, Josh take, take it. it. I got it. Throw the ball. Not over it. God Damn it! Game over! Love's custom PCs wins! Did we win? Did we win? The buzzer thing went off. I think we did! Best game ever! Woohoo! Yeah! High five! High five. Woo. Yes! Woo. Woo. Oh, for fuck's sake. Nigel! Wake up! <sighs> Nigel! Dan! He's on the ground, Tom. Dan, wake up! He's not moving. Here, give me his hand. There we go. All right. Why did you slap his penis? <laughs> Tom, edit that out. <laughs>